So an important discussion is emerging in communities uh, across our country. In fact, it's emerging in communities and countries uh, around the world uh, that have a colonial past. Last year, a statue of Sir John A. Macdonald, Canada's first prime minister, which once stood on the grounds of City Hall in Victoria, was removed and placed in storage. As well, at about the same time last year, Halifax Regional Council voted overwhelmingly in favor of putting a statue of Edward Cornwallis, Halifax's controversial founder, uh, into storage. While certainly not the only aspects of the debate that ensued, uh, these decisions became a catalyst for discussions uh, across the country. In many respects, uh, in my view, last summer was a turning point. Communities across Canada began to really think about what to do with various statutes, monuments, place names, and other forms of public acknowledgements for historical figures who are shrouded in various degrees of controversy. This discussion also highlighted the absence of Indigenous perspectives and experiences in how many communities across Canada understand, represent, reflect, and honour our country's history. It's time for Winnipeg to formally begin a discussion about these issues. Various approaches have been proposed. There are many people who argue the historical record simply does not reflect the real experience of our country and that history must be expanded to become more inclusive and accurate depiction of the decisions and actions shaping Canada. Some think we should remove or rename those monuments or place names that recognize colonial or controversial historical figures. At the same time, uh, others argue nothing should be done. So if you look through the window um, behind me and just to, to my right and your left, um, squished in between the Manitoba Museum and the Centennial Concert Hall uh, is a towering monument many Winnipeggers uh, won't recognize nor know much about. This monument recognizes the 90th Rifles Battalion, later renamed and better known as the Royal Winnipeg Rifles. The monument recognizes the role this battalion played in defeating Louis Riel and the Métis during the Northwest Rebellion in 1885. It's one of two monuments in Winnipeg that honors those who died while suppressing the rebellion. The other is in the cemetery at St. John's Cathedral, where some members of the Rifles have been laid to rest. According to historians, until the First World War, this statue represented the first war monument in the city of Winnipeg, a monument that honors the Dominion of Canada's premeditated, calculated, <clears throat> and deliberate suppression of its own people. <clears throat> uh, the Métis, a group of people who today are recognized in our country's constitution. So, uh, do I think this monument should be torn down? Uh, I don't. Do I think it should be locked in a closet? Uh, I don't. Uh, do I know the answer today, what Winnipeg as a city should or shouldn't do with the monument, if anything at all? Uh, I don't. What I do know, however, is we want to be careful not to act first and consult second. As a city, we need to engage with residents and really listen to how they feel about these monuments, names and other recognitions before we take action. And that's why I'm pleased we're launching a public engagement effort today called Welcoming Winnipeg. This public engagement effort has been tasked with listening to Winnipeggers to help develop a process and policy to guide how the city recognizes and commemorates various historical people and events with place names, statues, signs and streets. At the same time, the effort will also help guide decision-making in how to reconcile the absence of Indigenous perspectives, experiences, and contributions in the stories remembered and commemorated across our city. It's an engagement effort that will challenge Winnipeggers to examine our history and where it has led our city. It will challenge everyone involved to hear, to learn, and respect the views of all of our residents as we decide where our city is headed in the future. Uh, the monument behind me, uh, while not a City of Winnipeg owned monument, is certainly not the, the, the only historical marker in Winnipeg like this. 
Garnet Joseph Wosley, born 1833, became Deputy Quartermaster General in Canada. He was chosen to command the Red River Expeditionary Forces to suppress the Riel Uprising. He is commemorated in Winnipeg by Wosley Avenue, Wosley School, as well as the neighbourhood bearing his name. Vital Justice Grandin, born 1829, was an outspoken supporter for Métis rights, petitioning Ottawa on more than one occasion to protest the expropriation of Métis lands. At the same time, as many of us know, he played an instrumental and leading role in the construction by the federal government of residential schools. He's commemorated in Winnipeg by St. Vital, the neighborhood and shopping mall bearing his name, as well as Bishop Grandin Boulevard. Dudney Avenue uh, in Point Douglas. It's uh, named in honor of Edgar Dudney, born in 1835. He served as Indian Commissioner and Lieutenant Governor of the Northwest Territories. His policies included withholding rations from Indigenous people to force them to settle on reserves. Donald Alexander Smith, born 1820, received many honours from government and private sector throughout the years. He's frequently criticised for corruption. He also played a leading role in national railway development. In fact, he drove the last spike that uh, completed the railway in Canada, a symbol for some that Canada had finally unified from sea to sea, a symbol for others that Canada had been stolen forever. Donald Smith is commemorated by, in, in Winnipeg by Donald Street, the location of our city's whiteout street parties, as well as Smith and Strathcona streets. These historical figures uh, were complicated men. I can understand and appreciate why the reputations and actions are viewed so differently by people engaged in this discussion. The point here is this, the history of our city, of our province, uh, of our country is intricately interwoven into the cultural fabric of our city in ways many of us may not immediately recognize. For some, the names and monuments disproportionately represent aspects of our shared history that makes many in our community feel marginalized and forgotten. For others, <clears throat> the names and monuments celebrate progress, the development of a nation and a history that they know, understand, and are familiar with. As part of Winnipeg's journey of reconciliation, we're taking the first steps today, a proactive step in seeking a path forward on how best to commemorate historical figures as well as resolve the absence of Indigenous perspectives, experiences, and contributions across our city. We can't rewrite history, but we can shape our collective future. For some, I expect this discussion uh, will highlight strong emo emotions, <clears throat> as it's surprisingly doing for me today, <laughs> uh, and strong views on what needs to be done. Let me be clear on one thing. I want people to feel as passionate about our city as I do, but I hope that this process will be respectful, leading us to a shared vision of a future Winnipeg and not one that builds walls and barriers between us. I hope Winnipegers will take this opportunity to share their story of Winnipeg, uh, whether their families have been here for a year or whether they've been here for generations. I hope too that everyone will take the opportunity to be part of our journey of reconciliation. And by doing so, join us in helping to rebuild a mutual trust. Join us in returning the story of Canada originally envisioned by our treaties, a story of peace, uh, respect, and partnership with our Indigenous peoples. Um, I had a conversation uh, yesterday with uh, some of my, my peers uh, from uh, other cities, and um, some of whom uh, I've referenced in my formal speaking notes. And the message that... Uh, uh, that I heard was um, uh, that to ignore uh, some of the, the monuments and names that we're talking about here today um, does continue to per perpetuate uh, some of the harms and injustices um, and that no one, no single politician, no single level of government has the answer on how best to move forward for the benefit of all, uh, all Canadians. Uh, what we're trying to do here is learn from what we've seen in other communities where municipal governments have reacted to uh, debates about single monuments or place names and rather take a proactive approach with our broader community. And uh, I'm looking forward to that process and uh, the discussion 
uh, that will ensue. Uh, thanks very much, merci and miigwech, and uh, look forward to answering your questions after we've wrapped up the formal remarks.